Hey, welcome back everyone. Toysh is here. Got a little bit of a news update for you. Battle of the pre-orders this morning for this Thursday morn. Woke up, nice, had a good night's sleep. Just got inundated with just pre-order after pre-order. Buy this, buy this, buy this. And that's what we're going to talk about today, of course, because there's a lot of good stuff to cover. A lot of that retro nostalgia, especially with the McFarlane Superpowers line. I know a lot of you out there were saying, hey, eh, this line's not selling, not doing well. It is. It's actually selling because they opened it more outside of the Walmart market, right? So now everybody gets a little bit better chance. Over on the Hasbro Avenue, we have the X-Men 97 Wave 2. Now, we have known about these, as with the prior McFarlane. They were kind of hinted at. I did get to see a few of those at Toy Fair last year. That was really nice. So it's always cool to kind of see those come to fruition. But yeah, X-Men 97, still no show yet. Still no timeline designated date for when the actual show will debut on Disney+. Plus. Fingers crossed it's good, right? Hopefully. I'm really hoping that it just has a good storyline. However they do the animation, whatever they choose to do, just make it work with what we know for X-Men the Animated Series. And right before we get started, as always, for those of you interested, I will have the affiliate links down in the description below. Thank you so much, always, for using my links. Very much appreciate it. Helps the channel to grow. Yada, yada. Brace yourself. There's, there's going to be a lot of pre-orders. <laughs> And it's only this week. I mean, so far, we're, what, Jan uh, no, February 1st, right? As of today. And they're wasting no time for 2024. We're going to see a lot, both McFarlane and Hasbro. So, with the Superpowers line, quite a way, quite a lineup. I'm going to explain all this jargon, Michigash, right here. So, pay attention. Write this down. Now, first and foremost... What is going to go everywhere where you can get it on Amazon or Entertainment Earth or GameStop, we'll just say. We'll talk about stores. That's kind of up in the air at the moment. But we have the manga Japanese Batman. If you've seen any of my Batman 66s, yeah, you're going to know that I'm actually a fan of this. And I think that this body type with the paint, how he looks, really does suit the manga Batman, and they've applied all the necessary paint. You got the little white on the gloves. You got the white for the eyebrows. You have that more gray, muted, bluish sort of tone. That's awesome. This looks like a killer action figure, and yes, it's one that I definitely did pre-order. He's going to be on that Superpowers card with the Manga Batman logo right there, which is even cooler. When was the last time we saw any type of merchandise for that that wasn't in Japan? <laughs> And then you can see the backside of the card with the upcoming vehicles. Well, that's all coming up. Anyways, so if you want a really cool looking manga Batman, you can pre-order him with my links down below. So now moving on, we have Brainiac. And if you've been paying attention to my socials recently, there have been findings of the new Superpowers Brainiac Skull Ship hitting Walmart stores. It's out a little bit early, right? Plus, now we have pre-orders. You can grab it off Amazon and the like. But yes, for those of you that don't want to wait, you can go find this Brainiac ship, kind of, sort of, now. Although I would think more into February, into March, that's when you'll really start to find it. But the Brainiac that will be going with this ship, yeah, he's more of that classic Brainiac with the feels like I'm wearing nothing at all type skivvies. <laughs> Not my ideal Brainiac, but a very classic Superpowers-ish Brainiac. Though, for those of you actual true collectors of the Superpowers line, I'm sure you all have that metallic Skull Robot Brainiac, and that's going to go really nice with the Skull Brainiac ship, right? If you can find yourself one that's intact or still has its arms or any metallic pieces, yeah, you'll be in a good way. But this new Brainiac with his green skin and purple collared shirts, polo. <laughs> hey, they had to dress him into something, right? He's cool looking, I suppose. I like that whole classic nature of it. Yeah, it does look pretty cool. And with this Brainiac, like I said, you're going to need 
a Brainiac skull ship. And I will tell you, it's really fun to see now after getting a glimpse of this at Toy Fair, being able to kind of play with it. It was a prototype, so it really wasn't doing the whole mechanics of the tentacles moving around and whatnot. It was largely just a, a prototype, all grayscale sort of deal. So they didn't have the windows with the clear plastic and the eyes and whatnot. So to see it fully realized with the Brainiac figure in it, that's pretty darn cool. And I got to give it to them. That's awesome. As something that was supposed to be produced back in the day, now that the McFarland Toys is bringing it back, that's a nice little nod. And they're getting more and more adept to having it intermingle with the old school superpowers. Whereas before the initial first, second, kind of sort of third wave, they didn't really fit too much, especially with some of the character selection. But hey, that is part of the fun of getting new toys. But I have to say, this Brainiac Skull Ship is awesome. It's a total retro throwback. The box art is nuts. I totally love the way that that looks from the front to the back. Tells you what everything. Seats one figure, moves around, little legs, which you have to put on yourself. Yes, they're all a little bit hollow and whatnot, but it makes for an awesome looking skull ship. So again, if you want a Brainiac with the short shorts <laughs> and his skull ship, yeah, you can pre-order them now. But I gotta tell you, in seeing the Skull Ship, they also did have the Blue Beetle ship on display, but they didn't have the Blue Beetle, so finally I get to see what Blue Beetle looks like, and it does not disappoint. I mean, you could pretty much formulate that in your mind, right? Take a superpower's body, make it look like Blue Beetle, boom, there you go, all packaged up, ready to go. Ted Cord, he looks awesome. I would say... I would love to see them come with appropriate style weapons. I think that that's one thing that this Blue Beetle is missing, especially since he has his Blue Beetle ship. If he would have just had that closed gun pocket, right, little holster on the side, that's fine. Doesn't have to have a weapon or have a sculpted weapon, you know, in there or just better yet, have his little ray gun looking thing. That would have been even better, right? So, like I said, Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, looking oh so awesome. I love the blues. That's a great looking figure. But, much like Brainiac, yes, you are going to need his bug mobile. And this, to again, see this fully realized, not in grayscale. You got the windows going. Everything looks awesome. I could not be more happy. Out of all the reveals today, I'm just going to point this out. This is the number one thing that I want. I think that this is just the ultimate superpowers, old school DC Comics fun. You have a little push button on the back where the wings will flip out. It's a two-seater. And yes, we will get to that in just a second. You got to have a co-pilot, of course. But everything is just really simplified but really well done. Now, there are stickers with a little porthole where he's supposed to pop in and out of the ship. I'm not looking for that. This is supposed to be simplistic fun. However, they do have the little bar that he can hold on to, and you can pull it all the way down, put the figure on there, push a button, it'll zip him right back up, and that's very reminiscent of what I know when you'd see the comic books with Ted Cord arriving on the scene. Absolutely love it. You got the big old legs, you got the big old wings, the doors open, everything else, all the stickers inside the control panel. So flippin' cool, man. That is so ridiculous. Again, even the box art is awesome. And if you look on the back side, it shows you everything that it does, including if you zoom in, yeah, you get to see a little booster gold action. So unsurprisingly, coming soon, yes, there will be a booster gold figure. So stay tuned for that. You get to see exactly how to fix the legs. They all come in parts and pieces. The bug. Coolest thing ever of superpowers. Coolest thing I saw in the Blue Beetle movie, right? That was awesome. Definitely a must-have for me. And likewise with the Blue Beetle bug, they're doing Kilowog, which is awesome. <laughs> now, Kilowog, surprisingly, he is a giant superpowers figure. So he is going to stand atop all his Green Lantern Corps members, which, hey, that's awesome. We have a few going so far. Kilowog looking classic as bowels. Totally dig that. And I love the green that they chose. He's got the white gloves. He's got the big old ring on his hand. That is killer. I absolutely love this. And Kilowog is just one of those characters where he's an alien, he's a monster, he's a creature, and it just makes for a fun action figure. So that wraps up wave one. However, 
there is a little bit of a caveat to that. Now, over on the McFarland store site or on the Entertainment Earth site, this is where I need you to pay attention, sort of write this down. They have bundles going on. And if you buy the bundle of the action figures on the McFarland store, you will get the Superman Gold and the Sinestro Core yellow version, right? So not only that, but you'll get a gold label Brainiac ship. We'll talk about that in just a second. The only way to get these gold Superman and Sinestro Core Superman is to buy this bundle. So there is a gold Superman that harkens back to the original Superpowers line. Standard Superman, done all in gold. You get the idea. Then there is also the Sinestro Core Sinestro. Again, only way to get them. Do the bundle thing with the action figures. Make sure you know what you're getting. These will, and I say that with just a, you know, things might change, but as of right now, this will be the only way to get these two figures, much like the gold figures from the prior Superpowers wave. So Sinestro will come with his lantern. He's got that whole Sinestro core yellow thing going on. He looks pretty darn cool. But as a McFarlane store gold label exclusive, and again, I will say, as far as what is being told to me, this is only on the McFarland store. This one is the only one on the McFarland store, all right? The Brainiac with his skull ship, two-in-one combo, but this is from the old comic book, Terror in the Sky, all right? So he's more of a bearded, caped Brainiac. <laughs> the skull ship is purple and green, right? Very much Brainiac colors, we'll just say. Looks good. That's actually a really sweet set. I got to give it to him. The Brainiac looks cool. He's all in black. He's got some silver. He's got the bearded look. He's got the cape, right? So that's all well and good. Again, this is a gold label McFarland store exclusive version. You will not be able to get it anywhere else, but if you want it, you can totally head to the store and pick it up. Now, as of this video, I want to tell you, depending on when you see this, I think the bundle with everything is sold out, which I'll say kind of was a steal at 110, especially after that $40 a figure thing. So hopefully they're listening, right? <laughs> Fingers crossed. But yeah, the box is awesome. Different box. You got Brainiac sitting there with his little skull ship pointing, I don't know, at the earth or whatever, superheroes, go figure. Anyways, so if you want this exclusive ship, head over to the McFarland store and you can grab them now. And hopefully... As I try to simplify everything for everyone, that wasn't too confusing to follow. Now, as we head over to Hasbro, we have another blast from the past getting a new show, of which when it will debut is anyone's guess, but we have X-Men 97 Wave 2. If you're familiar with my channel, I just did a video on the first wave of X-Men 97. Perfect timing, right? Wink, wink. But you can check out the first wave, which overall is a pretty solid wave and... This is another solid wave too, as far as characters that most people know and love from the X-Men, X-Men the Animated Series, but then there are a few, huh, like who's that, you know? And that's for people like me, right? Where I go, oh, cool, that's a nice touch. Nightcrawler will be the first figure. These all have updated head portraits, more or less, they will have updated pinless bodies in some instances. Now, until I have them in hand to get a better look, that remains to be seen. But for the most part, yes, all the Wave 1 figures were largely pinless. New head portraits reflecting what you see for their character designs in X-Men 97. Basically, Nightcrawler just comes with a pair of hands. But you get all that articulation, and he looks pretty cool, especially with the extra head portrait. So, if you want... We could do some X-Men 97 pre-orders down in the description below. Moving on, we have Jean Grey, a much-needed X-Men character. We have seen several Jean Greys released. Don't get me wrong. This one, we'll say, was it third time, fourth time, fifth time is charm, whatever charm it may be. This one looks to rectify a lot of those mistakes and kind of put Jean back on the map. Fingers crossed. Now, again, you have to kind of consider that she has a bit of a different look in X-Men the Animated Series. It's vastly translated again over to this new show, from what we can tell. Most of the time she had it in a ponytail. She comes with a ponytail head, and she also comes with the more just the hairs down sort of deal with her outstretched hands. That's where I'm going to say, like with Nightcrawler, how about a bamf effect? Just It just says the word bamf, and it has the little particles, right? Just something that you could just put on a stand 
And you'd use your imagination and go, yeah, he just bamfed somewhere. So with Jean Grey, she's the, the mind manipulator, right? Give her a, a psionic ability to s- kind of clip onto her forehead or something like that, right? Powers always needed with Marvel characters, especially the X-Men. That's like the whole thing. Otherwise, like I said, over and over, they're just going to be characters that stand there and they give them no personality other than the expressions that they have on their face. So I would say more powers, please, in the box. Like I said, hands, extra head portrait, really good sculpt, pinless. I'm definitely looking forward to grabbing this Jean Grey. And she does look really cool, all packaged up on that retro carded X-Men 97 card back. And if you're wondering, no, none of these come with a build a figure piece. They are just largely the character themselves, which 25 bucks, you have to consider that too. That's how much Marvel Legends are. But this is the type of upgrade with the pin list. And well, in some case, some of the characters have a little bit more accessories than others. So they're nearing that 25, but not all. We'll just say, no, I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt just yet. Now, moving on. We have Scott Summers, Cyclops, and he looks pretty darn cool, I have to say. I have the VHS Cyclops. I still need to open that. (laughs) If you've seen my X-Men 97 video, it'll happen. Don't worry. This one, though, comes with a power effect that I have been just wanting for so long for someone like a character like Cyclops, right? It really is like a no-brainer. Give him the optic eye blast and yes they have finally done it so you get an extra head portrait you can clip the eye blast in totally dig that and just really kind of go to town that is something that really needs to happen for cyclops other than that he's just kind of a guy that stands there right and nobody wants that nobody's got time for that two head portraits couple extra hands the optic blast looks really nice on the card back except for the fact He does look like he's got some rather long arms, and that is a problem I ran into with the Magneto of Wave 1. The body type is too small for the arms. I think that's really what it is, so just keep that in mind. It could be an optical illusion. That's what I thought for Magneto, and no, when I had him out of the box, it's definitely not. So just keep that in mind when purchasing. Moving on, we have basically a new character. Now, whether or not and how this is going to play out and what this character will actually be for X-Men 97. Totally up in the air. But we have Madeline Pryor. She looks good. There's a couple things here and there where, yes, she's pinless. There's a couple, if you look at the, let's say, the artwork, the neck should have been painted black. That's one thing. She comes with the baby, which I'm going to assume at this point, without having seen the show, commenters after the show's premiered, I don't know. But that's going to be a a Summer's Child, maybe, something like that. However, this kind of plays out. And then she comes with a green power effect. I think it looks good. I'm glad that they're actually making her look like a woman. You know what I mean? As often with some more of the modern Marvel Legend figures, they get really, like, like Disney came in and was like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. We can't do that costume. You know what I mean? It, it, there's no reason to get that uptight about everything, right? You could have all these giant muscular dudes with these rippling pecs and all that stuff. And the women, they're like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. <laughs> Anyways, Madeline Pryor, couple effects, hands, little baby. Should have painted that neck. God, that bugs me. Now somebody pointed it out to me. And now I'm like, God, it's all I see, right? <laughs> But hey, she looks pretty cool. Hopefully, her character turns into something awesome, really extends the story for X-Men 97, so it's just a matter of time until we find out. Next up, we have Magneto. And I'm going to tell you right now, this this costume, I, you got to see it more in context. And then the storyline in the X-Men comic book from where it comes from, if I'm not mistaken, it has to do with him kind of being a, a good guy and he's on trial maybe they're kind of interweaving that into the X-Men 97 storyline. We'll have to wait and see because obviously, yes, with the end of X-Men the Animated Series, Professor X goes off into space, Magneto takes over the X-Men, and then we're just kind of left there. That's it. Realistically, for now, what I would want this figure for are the unmasked head portraits. I think that that Magnus sort of look will look great on the Wave 1 Magneto, so hopefully... (laughs) And I should say this now, fingers crossed, the head portraits are compatible, right? That would be 
just a total bummer for the most part yeah most marvel legends are all compatible with one another there there's some things here and there but he's got the big purple cape he's largely all a black figure He's got a great head portrait going on, and then he has a giant M on the front. And in case you were wondering, the M on the front, yep, it stands for Magneto. I know, I had to look it up myself, right, just in case. <laughs> All decked out on that retro card back. I know a lot of people say, you should buy two. You should get one for the wall, and you should get one. Just buy one. The, the whole idea of keeping stuff mint on card anymore, it just doesn't... It, the days have passed. You got old toys? By all means, keep them mint on card. Those aren't getting any younger. But, yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. Anyways, moving on. The final figure. One of the ones that I'm really excited for because it's a new character. It's a new character for Marvel Legends. It's not a new character for the Toy Biz days. But, Executioner. Looks pretty cool, right? A lot of people, uh, they definitely said, wait a minute. And instead of, instead of <laughs> taking the time to write that out on social media... And you just simply go into Google and say, who is Executioner X-Men? And then, and then get this, like it goes whoop, then 0.52 milliseconds. It'll tell you all about Executioner and how he's an ex-government agent and he has all this weaponry from confiscated military excursions and he just hunts down mutants, right? So hence the name Executioner. And yes, it does say F-O-H on his belt. Which, hey, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Comes with a bunch of different weapons. B thinks that this is the type of character because they are really getting it so close to the source material, he's most likely going to be hindered by all the armor, all the garb, everything he's wearing. He's going to be a character that kind of just stands there. You know what I mean? But for me and how I choose to display figures, it's fine. <laughs> But a lot of you out there, you really do care for articulation. Ah, totally gets you. Comes with a number of different weapons, hand cannon, one heck of a sculpt, one heck of a design. I'm really excited for this executioner. I think he looks really cool. Very happy to have this. Well done. I'm stoked. It's a solid wave too. I'll give it to him. Lots of characters we all know and love. You got executioner. And you have some weirdo named Magneto with an M on his chest. So, again, if you want any of these X-Men 97 Wave 2 figures, you can pre-order them now. And that, if you're still here, we'll wrap it up for my look at all these new figures. Who are you going for today? Are you Super Powers fan? Are you Marvel Legends fan? Are you a little bit of both? Kind of dabbling? Pick and choose? I'm curious. Let's talk about it. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything. These toys... And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, this is only the beginning. And look how much stuff is already on pre-order. Just wait. When we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.